I'm Jim Fitzgerald, a Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt and an expert on the Toyota production system. I'm going to discuss the cost of quality and how it is impacted by Sigma levels. I will look at the impact on net profit and Sigma. Manufacturers leave profits on the table by not focusing on operational excellence. Manufacturers exist in a very competitive environment. Competition comes from overseas as well as at home. My niece, who manages government contracts, says her customers are operating at 2.5 Sigma. Can you stay competitive at 2.5 Sigma? Manufacturers don't know the disadvantages of operating at only 2.5 Sigma. Manufacturing equipment gets older every day. Managers don't understand the advantages of the Toyota production system. This leads to an open door for competition along with actions that deviate away from operational excellence. By adopting a system approach as Toyota does with their Toyota production system, manufacturers can continuously improve their way past their competition. Adopt the excellence of the Toyota production system, Lean Six Sigma, and see how the excellence of Toyota can create excellence for your manufacturing company. System thinking leads to operational excellence, increased profit margins, and increased net profits. The march towards excellence does not stop, but accelerates with a continuous improvement program that generates 11 ideas per person per year. Defects cost manufacturers in many ways. By producing a product that is dead on arrival, you not only lose face with your customers, but it costs you money. A warranty program is a way of sticking behind your product at a cost. The cost of your warranty program is a strong indicator of deficient quality. Ideally, your quality would be so high a warranty program would lose marketing value. Every defect a customer finds damages your reputation as a manufacturer. Defects cause you to make a product and then throw it away. That requires a lot of effort and returns no value. In some extreme cases, defects can lead to liability issues. Now that we've spent a moment to discuss the effects of defects, let's discuss the type of defects next. Defect types and characteristics give you a feel for the insidiousness of defects. Some defects are obvious, like an orange peel paint job on a car, and some are hidden, like a non-spherical ball bearing. Defects can be critical, such as an electronic product failure, or not critical, such as a magnetic defect on a disk drive. Some defects span more than one category, such as the orange peel paint job as being very expensive to your business versus a blemish on the inside of a case. If the dialing mechanism on a radio fails, it is a functional defect, as opposed to a slight plastic molding blemish on a part. A poor rivet on the hull of a plane will not lead to product failure, however, poor wiring in an electronic device can. Some defects, such as a scratch on a case, do not affect anything else. Some defects do, such as an unrecognized slow oil leak in an engine. That leak may lead to the failure of many different components. Alas, some defects can be very expensive, such as an airplane hydraulic rupture, and others are very inexpensive, such as an out of round of a golf ball. Now that we have discussed the breadth and the impact of defects, let's set up our fictional company for this exercise. Since this is just an exercise, I get to pick the parameters. You can modify these parameters for your own company. The measure cost to build a product is $100 and the expected sales price is $200. I picked a production number of a million. Your production number could be 100,000 or maybe 1,000, whether you're produ producing airbags or airplanes. All these numbers will change for your company. Let's review the curve. An increased sigma results in less product failures at the extremes of the normal distribution. Sigma is a statistic based on a normally distributed population or sample. Not all product variations are distributed normally, but there are statistics available for those cases also. The plot shows a population average mu and deviations from mu by 1, 2, and 3 sigma. For instance, the sections that occur outside plus and minus 2 sigma represent defects. The left column represents increasing sigma, and the next column is a resulting defective parts per million opportunities. This represents a population of defects in a distribution of the million. This comes directly from sigma. The roll throughput yield is the percent representation of defect-free product. It is calculated at the level of each process and aggregated for this number. It is also a result of sigma. In all cases, whether two or six sigma, you have produced one million parts or products at $100 a piece. Sales for that investment and net profit are linked. Let's look at the two sigma example. If you start off making 1 million products at $100 a piece, you have produced 100 million worth of effort. If your rolled throughput yield is 69%, which means that 31% of your products contain defects and are not sold, then your sales are 138 million and your net profit is about 38 million. Your net profit increases with sigma. Lost opportunity cost represents the value of product not sold due to defects. 
The next column, Net Profit Benefit Per 05 Sigma Improvement, is a guide to show you what the financial benefit is by moving up the Sigma scale. For instance, you will increase your net profit by 29 million by moving from 2 to 2.5 Sigma, and 18 million by moving from 2.5 to 3 Sigma. Now let's look at this information graphically. The net profit increases with Sigma because you are selling rather than discarding product. This chart gives you a feel for the increased net profit as you become more defect free. The takeaway I observe is that the more poorly you are currently performing, the greater the improvement benefit opportunity. Whereas you can see that the improved benefit between 5 and 6 Sigma is relatively small. However, it would not be relatively small for airplane and parachute manufacturers. Each improvement step produces a net profit benefit. I have calculated the net profit benefit for each 0.5 Sigma improvement. As an example, for this business case, if you move from 2 to 2.5 Sigma, your net profit will increase by $30 million. Conversely, moving from 4 to 4.5 Sigma leads to a net profit increase of $2.32 million. Businesses that move from 4 to 4.5 Sigma may only partly do it for financial reasons but more for reputation reasons. Let's review the cost of failure next. The lost opportunity cost represents sales that were lost due to defects. Two Sigma is an extreme example where you're missing the opportunity to sell $61 million worth of your product. At three Sigma, you're still missing an opportunity to sell over $13 million of your product. Even at 4.5 Sigma, you're leaving $260,000 on the table. The acceptable lost opportunity cost is based on the improvement effort cost as well as your reputation. At this point, I'm going to discuss Sigma operation levels. Certainly, if you are at 2.5 Sigma, then 3.5 Sigma is a reasonable target. If you're operating between 3 to 3.5 Sigma, then 4 Sigma is a reasonable operational target. I would recommend, for instance, that if your goal is to operate at 4 Sigma, that you target 4.5 Sigma or 1 half Sigma greater. That means that you will normally operate between 4 to 4.5 Sigma rather than between 3.5 and 4 Sigma. Next, I'm going to discuss using quality inspection as a vehicle for defect reduction. Here is something to think about. Defects result from processes. How come quality inspectors inspect products? If what you put into a process is perfect and the process is perfect, you don't need to inspect the output. It's entirely possible that Toyota has the most quality inspectors. Every single person on the assembly line inspects their processes and detects defects before they enter their process. When a Toyota employee detects a defect, they stop the assembly line to determine the source of the defect and rectify it. They have some tricks that they use to minimize assembly line downtime, but it is important to them that they bite the bullet and stop generating more defects. Not only does this help rid their products of defects, but it also detects defects before they become hidden. There is a whole world of statistics out there based upon a normal distribution. The first step is to find out if you can use those statistics. If you can't, there are other options. Moving up sigma levels leads to improved financial numbers. Take a significant first step and move up to the easy sigma. Publicize the results. Make sure everyone in the company understands the value of your effort. I'm Jim Fitzgerald, a Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt and an expert on the Toyota production system. If you want to manufacture like Toyota, then let me help you get started.